go. And it says people go and tell her today, I have to take glasses today. Oh, because that makes all the difference. Makes all, well, I don't have to go like that, so. Yeah, well, it is looking good. So, but, um, I'm making it bigger for her. I know, because you were looking like that. No, but I did that so that I can, that yesterday I was down. See, here I was yesterday looking, making certain today I don't have to, so I can get my blind. So, okay, but this is old Cam. And this is not a spring chicken. Today we're covering, of course, our Cam's dailies. This is from Cam's 2013. This is the most you feel. Yeah, we got the who's in attendance today, which basically, uh, there's some people from yesterday, well, there are differences today, but there are people that are not on this. I know that Jennifer Lawrence and Sam Kaplan and Liam Hemsworth are there. I got pictures put up from them last this night. This is the Hunger Games. Yeah, they're there pushing the thing, but uh, but here we got uh, Jessica Biel was there today, and Claudia Cardinale. Mm -hmm. and we also have Benicio Del Toro, who's been there, Bernice Bale, Leonardo DiCaprio, he's still there. He just came back. He oh. was off the list yesterday, he's on it today. Okay, because there are still some events that happen close to there. And J James Franco is on the list today, as is Martha Keller. Mm -hmm. which wasn't there. Martha Keller basically has a, they've done a restoration of a movie she was in, so. Mm -hmm. And Gary Bergen, Lee Druckler, Kirsten Dunst, Jane Fonda. Yeah. She yeah. was there yesterday, yeah, too. Yeah, Dr. Gavis, some people are there. Um, Eva of, Longoria. Is, is still there. Carrie Mulligan, which we knew was there before, but wasn't listed. And Clive Owen is now there. Mm -hmm. And then we've got, um, you know, Mostly, we're, we're, you know, a lot of, um, we know that, okay, here's the trick is, a lot of the performers that are on juries are not being listed as being there. Oh, well, that's kind of interesting. I know that Cole Kidman's there, and I know that Zang, and, Chris and, Zang and Christopher Walsh, and, and yeah. a lot of people that are on juries that are there, they're, they're not listed on this thing. I think somebody, sort of good, actually, today, we have a today quote we today, have a, quote. a real quote, I made up the one yesterday. Oh, what I am giving you today is not an image or the quest a single image, rather it is the image of a quest, the quest offered by cinema. This is from Rithy Pond. I know, they, uh, this is from the Bombay talkies thing, which I didn't put in here, because it, it's about oh. 10 pages of material. Oh, okay. So anyway, you'll just have to go look at the website, because we'll have information on the Bombay talkies right there, right? Yeah, it's a yeah. big thing. I'll put that up tonight. So anyway. That actually is a big deal, because it's 100 years of Bollywood. Yeah. So, I mean, there, there's a whole, but what it is, they got a lot of people from Bollywood in a massive press conference talking about it because uh, Sanjit Ray is being honored and uh, and people from Slumdog, Monty, you know, Slumdog Wheaton, as we call it. But uh, here we got Cannes Classic, though. Fedora, abiding vision. I like how they say abiding vision of cinema. Yeah. But it's, uh, this is where Mark Keller comes in. Actually, had William Holden was one of the stars. Oh, this really? is, this is what I need. I think this is a, a Billy Wilder film that didn't. Billy Wilder movie just sort of went like that when it was originally released, and now all of a sudden, it's a great movie. This is the problem: is that um, I was watching a thing last night. They said that this was the most god awful bad Orson Welles movie he ever made, and then now it's listed as one of the great movies in the entire history of the cinema. So it was. Yeah. Mm. Well, they revisit things over time. Um, like Citizen Kane is no longer listed as number one movie when a Hitchcock film is listed as number one. So. Time changes things. I think Vertigo is another big movie, but um, uh, basically in 1978, uh, Fedora was an out of competition preview. Uh, this it was nothing new for Billy Wilder, who already received a Grand Prix at the festival in 1946 for the Lost Weekend. Um, basically, uh, William Holden and Martha Keller for his film noir production put a premiere of uh, Fedora remastered a Swiss actress Grant an interview in which she talks about the difficult show. She, Martha Keller doesn't actually do a whole lot anymore. I think she's up on How my age. I think she, well, she's in my age category, I think. Oh. So. American independent producer Barry Detweiler hears about the death of Fedora, a legendary actress who for the past several years had been living in retirement on a Greek island. He recalls his last memories of her a few weeks before. He had gone to see her in her retreat in order to try and persuade to her to make a comeback in the role of Anna Karenina. Now here's this is a remake, and this Martha Keller was originally in the first no, one. No, this is a remastered. 
A remastered, remastered. A remastered one. They so, rediscovered the movie, and it had been, it's um, basically... But see, if she played a retired person before, and now they remastered it, how old was she when she played the part? Um, well, she, I think she was, a, she was a very established actress. This would have been, was it 37 years ago? She's probably oh. well in her uh, 70s, pushing 80 right now, because okay. she was a very established European actress. Mm. Like I said, uh, if Mark, Mark Keller remembers little about the film, she is full of praise for William Holden. He was a magnificent, intelligent, delicate friend. Yet her Billy Wilder was the greatest director whom she was fortunate to work with. I mean, I worked with William Holden on Westerns. He did a lot of Westerns, folks. Mm -hmm. I, mean, I worked with a thing with him, uh, him and Glenn Ford and William Marshall. William Marshall tried to kill William Holden and the young Glenn Ford in the movie for real. So he wanted, he wanted realism. So he was, he, I think he was, they said he, he was throwing axes and shooting arrows at the two guys for real. So, but um, that's yeah, basically what it is. Uh, basically, Helen, she missed the only understanding how lucky she was and so difficult did the filming turn out in the 1970s. Wilder's popularity was not what it was, the director was nervous on the set. The filmmaker was from a school of old cinema continued to film as it were still 1950s, going against the age of modernity, and particularly the actor studio that was sweeping through Hollywood studio. Like I told people, I went to the actor studio. I went in, then I left the same day, and I came back and put in the class. So, but, um, you know. That ex explained, at the time, the studios governed everything, even down to clothes and hair. The message was, be pretty and keep quiet. Some accepted, others left it. That's where Lee Strasberg and all the other. And they all kept busy, though, was the studio system. The studio system, I, okay, we'll put it this way, from I think the 1930s until the late 1960s, I worked any time I wanted to work because the studio system had kept my, my grandmother working and my father busy, so it meant they were there to recommend me to come in and film for people. studio system was great for the little guy. The big guy wanted more money, so the big guy's what killed it, so. Mm -hmm. And it was just this world of spectacle and deceptive wits that the filmmaker attacks in Fedora. The satirical commentary is also evident in his masterpiece of 28 years earlier, Sunset Boulevard. Uh, the, uh, basically, the uncontested master of the American comedy, Some Like It Hot, The Apartment Shows in Fedora, another side of his talent that have engaged a critical observer. I mean, okay, people have to understand, okay, here I'm going to try to explain something very simple. Film noir, which everyone in the world as a cinema expert loves, is old school. Old school has never went away. People love old school. If you can do an old school production and get the money for it, they're going to... I mean, every actor in the God Known Universe will go to an old school production. Yeah, I remember when they were talking about the artist, how easy it was actually to get the actors, because they thought it was going to be difficult. Yeah, but then they found out... Uh, I know I was talking with... Um, you know, to people that should know better setting with, I sat with the people at the premiere of the thing, I sat with all of these people who worked on it, and basically, a guy that I worked with at Disney, you know, from, from a long time ago, he's sitting here talking to me, he was in the movie too, he said, I didn't realize there was so much sound. Mm. So, yeah, they're talking, that they all had sound in them, because they made, they did special effects, they had music, they, you know, boom, boom, you know, they had uh, and, and all kinds of noises and things. There was no such thing ever as a silent movie. So, but uh, we got in competition at Coen, Bugger, Coen Brothers rock and roll style. Rock and roll or rock and folk? Oh, rock, oh, rock and, and folk, folk style. Well, that, style. No wonder why it's so I, I know. They like to make fun of, um, of the music and folk and people. They don't really think Hicks like me are really not very bright. So. So this is a musical return to cans for Joel and Ethan Cohen. These are the big, the infamous Cohen brothers, right? Yeah. And this year they've been selected for Inside Llewellyn Davis, a film with a folk feel set in the legendary Greenwich Village of the 1960s. Yeah, basically they filmed a Palm Dior for Barton Fink in 1991, uh, edgy humor. So Did you ever see that? Yeah, I never liked it. I never saw it. I never liked it. I don't like a lot of what the Cohen brothers do, so. It's, I, 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 a different yeah. sense of humor. A different sense of humor, yeah. Okay. Oh, bohemian atmosphere reigned in the village in the 1960s, and from the top of the river facades down to the middle drugstores, a few notes of folk music resound with increasing volume. These are the notes of Llewellyn Davis, an artist who dreams of, of and records at sold-out concerts. In the meantime, he sleeps on the lane and on, oh, 
Jean and Jim Sofa until the day he auditioned for a music mogul. Llewellyn Davis is a big screen version of Dave of Dave Von Bach, an emblem of Greenwich Village and spearhead of folk music. This could be the man who taught a certain Bob Dylan his first guitar chords. Though Llewellyn's story and other portraits painted that of a private world of the New York folk at his very beginning. There is no such thing as New York folk. Bohemian music has nothing to do with folk music, folks. Mm -hmm. Bohemian music is, is, is people... That's Bohemian music. Uh, uh, folk music is Michael rolled a boat ashore, hallelujah. That's folk music. And to take on the role, the Coen brothers called on Oscar Isaac, who has appeared in Shea, uh, Shea, Agora, and Drive, and who is now playing a starring role for the first time in his career. Alongside him, a, Bruni, a brunette, Carrie Mulligan, which she's been there, um, tries her hand at singing and plays well. Well, uh, Lewin Davis is mute. Described as the new Audrey Hepburn, she can count on the advice of experienced singer Justin Timberlake, who also stars in this film along with John Goodman, which is why they're all there. Yeah, but uh, we, we went to the premiere, we went to the screening of Drive. I don't remember that performer. He must have been, I do not remember him, but we went to the premiere. We saw a lot of the people. I don't, I don't. Okay, but the. Uh, uh, basically, the film revolves around the cat. Ah, no, Monty would not be happy. I know. Uh, Ethan and Joel Cohen answer questions journalists at the screening inside the uh, screening of Inside the Well and Davis. With them were Oscar Isaac, who plays the lead role, Casey Mulligan, Jester Timberlake, as well as T Bone, who is in charge. Where in the heck is T Bone listed on that? I thing? didn't see T Bone listed. Who was? Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. You got on the cat in the film. The, the, uh, well, the film Do they really, really have a cat? Uh, the film doesn't have a story or plot. This was why we added the cat. Yes, the, the plot revolves around the cat. Well, you know, the artist, the dog from the artist, yeah. Augie, did walk the red carpet. Oh, he walked the red carpet, plus the guy, uh, the director, the one bad, the dog, he's not even a damn actor. <laughs> the dog is a dog. <laughs> it's like he's not even an actor. He performed for sausages. That's right, isn't that something? <laughs> 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 I like that. Um, the question of bad luck, uh, Isaac, uh, the question about a Carrie wasn't in the right place at the right time, he has slightly destructive behavior. That's, that's Pete next. He was looking for authenticity and wasn't charistic. Uh, a careerist. A careerist. He had the internal conflict. He was currently taught between success and failure. That's, that's called beat. It's, what it is is um, the Coens are very big on, on country and folk stuff. Uh, but they don't understand. This is before their time. They don't understand. That's not folk music, folks. Mm. They did not do folk music in in New York. They may have had some people that were there, but the Bohemian has nothing to do with folk music. I, I'm old enough to remember. So Ethan Cohen talking about casting says casting is hugely important. When we write a character who is in every scene, the actor has to be able to act, to behave like a musician and to hold for an entire song. We really struggled in telling that Oscar. Well, generally they go to the Coen Brothers stable of players. Most of them, uh, for instance, um, uh, uh, George Clooney is a member of their company. George Clooney is a musician. Hmm. So, um, so uh, basically, uh, we've got uh, a notion of success and failure from Justin Timberlake. We see a lot of people have talent for whom nobody listens. <laughs> Luck and, launch someone's career, the most important thing is not to get caught up in what stops us from expressing ourselves. Well, and Justin's one of those rare few that actually has both an acting as well as singing career. And so as... Um, LL Cool J. LL Cool J, and the other guy that was at Drive, what was the big tall guy, um, Goslin, Ryan Goslin. Ryan Goslin. I, I don't think he's a musician. Yeah, he's a, he's a, he, uh, he, he's a Disney performer. He sang in days of over the Mouseketeers. He's with all of these people. Oh, really? Timberlake, all these guys were together. Oh, they I were all heard. singing and they all become performers. And uh, he doesn't sing, but he probably, they said he probably had the best real true voice of all of them. So yeah. you can expect that he will get back again. And Carrie Mulligan talking about her experience as an actress and singer. I was quite nervous. So we met and worked on the music, listened to the music and made choices. Joel and Ethan's talent puts you at ease. But they wouldn't have cast her. Well, I, I didn't know that. Oh, she was sing She wasn't she in yes. Gatsby? Yeah. She also saw her. She was in Drive. 
Oh, that was her. That was okay. her. We saw her. We saw her. Saw her, and uh, so Ryan Gosling, both her, and so. Oh, Ryan Gosling. Ryan Gosling. The competition. Borgman's horror film with a touch of black humor. It's not what you might expect. Alex Van Vanderdam Borgman, Borgman is one of the surprises of the selection. The Dutch filmmaker who is a playwright, a painter, writer, and actor has not been a can since 1998. That was the year he presented Little Tony. His fourth film, An Uncertain Regard, which means that's a big deal. This, he's had four films and basically been cooled off since then, but now he's in competition with them. Okay, sometimes it takes a lifetime for people to get there. I mean, yeah. And then other things, right off the bat, no one understands. And Borgman is the first Dutch film in competition since 1975. It is true that, with the exception of Paul Verhoeven, who now works in the United States, new filmmakers from this little country are rare. As for Alex Van Warm, uh, Warmerdam, he does not only make films, he is also a painter, playwright, theater director, and writer. This explains why, in his 30 year career, he has made only eight feature films, including the cult film The Northerners, <coughs> which met with great success when it was released in 1992 being described as staggering, untellable, mad, and funny. His third film, The Dress, was also very well received and won the International Critics Award at the Venice Film Festival in 1996. Yeah, but as we know, we've talked to enough independent filmmakers over the years. It can take seven, eight years to get the money to make a movie. So mm -hmm. over 30 years, he's made eight. He's actually beating the odds to get his mm -hmm. movies made, especially uh, the country is not known for filmmakers. They're known for actors and actresses and painters, but not known for filmmaking. Mm. Uh, Alex, Van, Alex Van Rotterdam has often been compared to Boonwell, to Haiti Jacuzzi, and uh, Kiris Maki in his absurd and unique universe. According to filmmaker Borgman, is neither, nonetheless darker than his previous films. I wanted to drive into a dark and known area of my mind and see what I could find there. He found in Borgman a man who, who rings on a middle-class family doorbell and asks if he could take a shower. What is he, a dream, a demon, the incarnation of a fear? Will he be up to the spectator to find the answer for, uh, for, for Alex Van, Van der Dam wanted to make a film that was open to interpret, which asks more questions than it gives answers. Actually, we've seen some very good movies where at the end of the movie, you don't know whether it was ever any of it happened or not. <laughs> That's a good movie. So, but um, It seemed to me, actually, he's not as much doing well as Jacques Tahiti and Kira's Maki as he is um, Roman Polanski. Mm. That's Roman Polanski style of stuff. Oh, is it? Yeah, so uh, this is what we got today. I guess we're going to do more tomorrow. And um, until then, this is old Kim. This is Knob Spring Chick. And wherever you're watching, subscribe to us, follow the daily news caps in 3D. And of course, come like us and friend us on Facebook. Oh, yeah. And you, you can, can follow us on Twitter. And we can, uh, we're on www. Uh, dot mbn news video web dot com or www.thetravelsuite.com and the information is not the same on both sets. Yeah, so yeah, so take a look. Some of it has more event information, press information, and event so information, party information. And movie information. Yeah. Um, actually, uh, you have things specifically filmed for the travel suite that you are not finding on MBN news video web. Mm -hmm. So so come check it out and also come you can come follow us on Pinterest too. We'll show you the pictures, which leads you some of the stories um, that you might be interested in from pictures. Oh, boy. Anyway, thank you for joining us. Happy camp. Oh.